Welcome to another video in our quantitative methods for business. In this video, we will look at the most complicated forecasting method in statistics or in quantitative method, which is the multiplicative decomposition. I'm not going to go over the method itself, so just to save time because there are lots of steps to be done. So I would recommend going over your textbook. If you're not too familiar with multiplicative decomposition, look at the steps before you watch this video. I will try to explain the steps as we're doing them. But let's start looking at the problem. So I have here the data set up. We have the actual value, sale, demand, wherever they are, for 16 quarter. And of course, at the end, we will need to forecast the next year quarters and so on. So let's get started. OK, so the first, first step in multiplicative decomposition is finding the seasonal indices. And to do that, there are several steps that we need to do. Our first step is finding the or smoothing out the data by using the centered average for each quarter or for the, each season. So I'm going to use k equal 4. You can pick k anything or is greater than 2. So I'm going to take k equal 4, which means in multiplicative decomposition, the centered average is the average of the four, five quarters five seasons. But the first and the last, we take half of those. So I'm going to take 0 0.5 t minus 2, two seasons are ago, plus the season after that, plus which is t minus 1, current season, which is t, the next one, which is t plus 1, then 0.5 to t plus 2. t plus 2 and then we divide by 4 and why 4 even though it took 5 4 because the first and the last we took half of those so in fact we have 5 values 4 values instead of 5 and this will give me the first seasonal index I'm going to repeat that one more time and then I'll just drag it so it's 0 0.5 t minus 2, which means now it's the second quarter. OK, so the second quarter, which is this, plus the next three, plus 0 0.5 times the last one divided by 4. And we're going to repeat that till I get all the values. But of course, we can't go all the way up. We have to stop at quarter 14. Because if I use this now to find the centered average, I don't have the next three. I want it to. So this is where we stop. And this is the first step in finding the The second step is finding the seasonal ratio, which is basically the actual value divided by the smoothed value. So this is the actual value. And again, we can start at quarter three because I don't have the uh, smoothed value for the first two values. Divided by the smoothed value. So it's P9 here, the quarter, divided by the smoothest value. And this will give me the first seasonal ratio. And the same idea, I'm just going to drag. So it fills all of these. And this is the second step. Our next step is to find the seasonal average, or the average for the seasonal ratios for each quarter. To do that, I'm just going to move all of these averages into here. 
So we're going to start with season three, the third quarter, because I don't have the first two. So this here just simply would be this cell, which is E9. Then the next one would be E10, because it's for quarter four. Then that's the first season. Then it's going to be E11. Then E12, and so on. Of course, we keep moving with that. Okay, so I filled in the rest of the data, as you can see here, which is 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20, which is the last one. This is quarter 14, which happened to be over here. So now, these are the first, second, third, and fourth quarters. And you can see that we have only three for each season because we missed the first two and the last two. So now, our next step, okay, so as you can see, I filled in the rest of the table over here, the seasonal issues, so just to show you that it's A15, E16, 17, 18, then 19, and 20, which is the last value over here. Now, we're going to find the average for each quarter or each season. So I'm going to find the average of this, and I'm going to simply drag it to find the average for the next three seasons. So these are the average for season one, the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter. And you can see that we don't have the first and second quarter here, and we can not have the last two quarters here because of the smoothest average. Our next step would be to take now these seasonal averages and put them in the seasonal index above. So the first one is B33. So I'm going to come over here, the seasonal index, and say this is B33. And this is B, sorry, this would be C33. one decided. So this would be T33 and this would be E33. Just to double check you can see that they are the same values we have over here. Okay so the rest would just be the same values repeated over here. So I'm just going to go here and press F2, then press F4 to make it absolute reference. The same for this, so I can simply copy it. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this and paste them here, here, and finally here. So that's the simple. So our next step is to find the unseasonalized value, which is basically the actual value divided by the seasonal index. So that's the actual value divided by the seasonal index. And I'm going to drag this all the way down. So this concludes the unseasonalized well, this is the first step in the in multiplicative decomposition. Our next step is to find the trend equation for the unseasonalized values. So since the purpose of the linear trend equation is minimizing the least squares error, it's important to remove the seasonal effect. That's why we take the unseasonalized values. So using the unseasonalized value, column G, as the dependent variable, 
and the time period column C as the dependent uh, independent variable you can you compute the linear trend by finding the intercept so I'm gonna go here and type intercept and it's gonna ask me for the y values first so I'm gonna choose the seasonalized one the G values that we just found and the time period so we're going to choose the actual value this will give me the intercept and we do the same thing for the slope make sure you choose the y value as the unseasonalized values comma and the time period as the x value Okay. This will give me the intercept and the slope. So the formula is y equal 58.058 plus 0 0.861 times 1. Our third step is to start calculating the forecast. We're going to use the trend equation to find the unseasonalized forecast over here. So the formula would be what? This is equal to the intercept. And again, I'm going to press F4 to make it absolute reference, plus the slope times the time period, which means it's this value over here. And I'm going to press OK, and it's going to give me the first forecasted value. Just going to drag all the way here to find the remaining ones. And this is the unseasonalized forecast. Next step is finding the seasonalized forecast over here, which is basically taking the seasonal index and multiply it by the unseasonalized forecast. So I'm going to take the unseasonalized forecast and multiply it by the seasonal index over here. Same idea, I'm just going to drag and it's going to give me all of these values. Okay, and finally we can calculate the errors and the MAT and the MSE and MAPE as we did before. What's the MAT error? It's the actual value minus forecasted and the absolute is basically the absolute value of that I'm gonna drag all of them in a minute the squared error is basically we take the error and we square it and the absolute error is basically we take the error the difference between them and divide by the actual. So when I drag all of this down, you're going to see the add and maybe I'll get to find the last value here and. Uh, MAPE, all of this, let's make this percentage. And we have all the errors. Our last, which is the most important step, is finding the forecasted for the next year, the first for the next period. So quickly, this is the slope. So the intercept plus slope times the period. And that will give me the answers and wise forecast for the next period. And here just the unseasonalized times the index as we did above on the table and this will give me the forecast for the next four quarters thank you for watching i know it's a long method but that's multiplicative decomposition don't forget to subscribe to my channel and look for more videos